Welcome back to the Lord of the Rings adventure card game. I've been having a huge amount of fun with this game so far, and I think you will too. If you check it out, there's a link in the description. This video is kindly sponsored by Asmodi Digital. And what I got to say is we're going to play one of the harder, well, shall we say not one of the harder, but we're going to try doing a campaign. And this is a narrative adventure told through five challenging quests. If you missed the previous video, then I'd highly recommend checking that out because I go through a lot of the basics about the game in general and what most of the mechanics are all about. Now, I've done something a little bit different here. I created a deck called Tactics. This is not something I'd recommend doing, Primarily because it is a deck that really runs out of resources extremely quickly. And it is probably not something that is going to be that successful. But I actually really like doing these kinds of decks. I like doing decks that are unlikely to succeed, but then end up being surprisingly powerful in one way or another. So what we're going to do is we're going to try our tactics deck here. I use the second deck beforehand in the previous episode and it worked pretty nicely you know it worked pretty nicely but I'm going to try tactics this time around and what we're also going to do is if this doesn't work if I end up losing like no one's business then we're going to go back to the drawing board and we are going to create our own deck from scratch so you can see exactly what's going on with the deck building and maybe maybe just maybe we'll create a deck that is extremely fun and interesting and uh, we'll see. I've got Legolas here, and uh, I've got Gimli, and we also have... Uh, I can't remember the other one's name, unfortunately, but anyway, let's do this. An anguished Gloin arrives at Bjorn's Hall with dreadful news. A great spider has captured Bilbo Baggins. He beseeches a hardy band of heroes to help rescue his dear friend. And because this is the first time we're doing this, I am going to play on the easiest playstyle for the moment. After arriving at Beyond's Hall, you've learned the famous Bilbo Baggins was taken by Mirkwood Spiders mere hours ago. Without hesitation, you volunteer to find and retrieve the Hobbit, hopefully before he's consumed, or worse. And so you find yourself before Greenwood the Great, that the wary and the wise call Mirkwood. A sleeping evil once inhabited the Greenwood, but was purged many years ago. The forest has since known a period of peace and the return of wholesome life. As the shadows now gather under the trees, you sense a foulness on the air. You fear evil may have returned to this realm. You begin to search for clues as to which direction the spiders took Bilbo. There are ample signs of recent struggle in the small glade, and several of the Hobbit's possessions are strewn about. After a few moments, you notice a gleam of metal on the forest floor. Perhaps a sign. You're about to investigate, as several giant spiders creep into the glade. They don't seem at all interested in assisting the search. Quite the contrary. I can walk this path, but others have not the skill. I am Idrain, defender of the north. I shall claim full amends for every fall and stopped toe. Ah yes, and I should also mention that the other weakness of this tactics deck is the fact that we don't have a lot of fate points. And fate is this yellow number right here, so basically it always, well, it's willpower, but it gives you fate points and things like that, and you can use willpower slash fate to do damage to objectives and hazards. And that is definitely something that we want to do. So as you can see here, Bow of the Galadrim, absolutely fantastic weapon right here. It is really good. It is zero cost resource, gives you plus one attack and gains ranged on your unit, whatever it may be. So that is really nice. Spear wall is also fantastic. Basically makes it so that enemies do no damage or do very little damage. And we are going to just swap out those. I'm going to use Bjorn almost immediately, I think. Let's just confirm that and see what we can get. All right. So pretty much this deck is all about doing damage, equipping things to your units, to your heroes, making them into unstoppable killing machine beasts of things and 
yeah, just having a grand old time that way. So, yeah, so gain ranged. So let's have a look. So I'm going to make Idrian into a ranged character now. So she can now use ranged. And she's being attacked almost immediately. That's absolutely fine because now Gimli, as you can see right here, his ability is to get plus one attack the first time a character takes damage this round, which, of course, Idrian has. So she can now attack right here or Gimli can attack right here and we can basically clear the board which is kind of hilarious because I think, well, that's the thing, we can't really clear it because of the way the game works. It's a action by action basis rather than a turn by turn basis. And then when everyone has made and it, indeed expended all of their actions, then the phase is ended and then a new phase begins and then everyone gets their actions back and then they can continue to play cards and attack and do all kinds of other things. So what I'm going to do is... I'm thinking I'm going to... Can I give Citadel Plate to her as well? Yes, I can. So I'm going to give her... <laughs> she's a, she's an absolute beast now. So yeah, Idrian has two equipment now. She has Bow of the Galadrian, which gives her plus one attack. And she has Citadel Plate, which is a hero-only card, which gives her plus four health. And she also gains block. And block is a really, really fantastic defensive measure as well. And otherwise, I suppose I will be, you know, just summoning a veteran axe hand right here because it's it's really good to have another unit on the battlefield. And we are now just gonna go to town and we're just gonna kill a whole bunch of a whole bunch of enemies. Now, what is really cool about Idrian in particular is that she has this ability called Vanquish. Now Vanquish, what that does is, uh, I, I don't believe the game explains it, but you, I, I believe you can go into the glossary and that will give you a rundown of all of the abilities that certain, certain cards can have. But Vanquish is something that triggers when you kill something. So for example, Idrian is going to kill this one, or at least I'm going to attack this one in just a second. And what that will do is that will then ready her again for another attack next action that I can take. So if, you, if I just de demonstrate it here, we kill that. And did you see that? She became exhausted, but then because of her ability, she has now become ready again, and she can attack, which is, in my opinion, amazing. I think that is a really, really cool ability. So that's the reason why I decided to have her instead of someone else, like Arwen or something, because Arwen is really good. She's really good. She can heal. She can do all kinds of wonderful things. So what we're going to do now is... Technically, I think it's probably best to kill this spider, so I guess we will just do that. There we go. And then this is the uh, this is the beginning of the new round, which is exactly what I meant. And upkeep, any card with upkeep, like Legolas, for example, he has an upkeep ability, which allows him to deal one damage uh, every single round start. That's basically what upkeep means. And there are a variety of other upkeep cards as well, like there's this other card called Self-Preservation. And I personally love this card because what it does is it heals a particular card for, for one HP every beginning phase. And that's really powerful in my opinion. But just put that on something like Gimli or Idrian right now, or on a, uh, a bit of a more fragile character like Legolas, and he's going to be full HP all the time. It's going to be great. And we also have Curious Brandy Bucks right here. These are hobbits. Now, Revenge is also another ability that I don't think I really went over in the previous episode. And basically what that what this is, is when the, when the card dies, when this Curious Brandy Buck dies, he will then take an enemy minion with him. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could just defeat one minion immediately. So it could be the strongest, most powerful card ever, and it would be defeated. So it is a really, really cool card. Otherwise, uh, I guess I'm actually going to be playing one of these Beyond guys because these are fantastic, in my opinion. These are really good. You can't attach anything to them, I don't believe. So that is uh, a bit of a shame, but for the most part, they are fantastic. So there we go. We have cleared it. Lying on the flo forest floor is a small elven blade, beautiful, strong, and light. This must be Bilbo's sword, Sting. A valuable treasure. Oh, and there we go. We gained it. Nice. We actually have it as a card. This is cool. All right. Thick webs. Exhaust every ally that comes into play. All right. So we can just travel right now, which is exactly what we're going to do. 
Bilbo's mind must have been clear during the first moments after his capture. You notice that he slid his sword along the undergrowth as he was hauled away. When the spider's poison immobilized him, he must have dropped Sting. Encouraged, you venture into the shadowy green-gray wilderness that is Mirkwood. The small cocoon has dropped before the lady. Ha! Eats it, my lady! Scrumptious it is! Tasty! Sweet! <laughs> the skinny creature squeals in pleasure and anticipation, jumping to and fro on arms and legs as if a spider himself. The creature gives the cocoon a kick. False it is! Bathrooms! Trickster! Thief! Cheater! Callum! Callum! Eats it! Eats it! The enormous spider moves to hover over the cocoon. Spear-sized mandibles emerge slowly from its dripping maw. Suck it to bounces, milady! No hanging this, or drying this needle! Like tough dwarfs, or tricky elves, sweet and juicy habitus. Just leave clothes, my lady. Ow. Ow. For precious, precious is in its pockets, my precious. The spider monstrosity is about to delve into her meal when a sudden noise is heard from the edge of the lair flapping its hands nervously and bobbing its scrawny neck. The creature pleads. Oh, don't listen to woodsy noises, my lady. Eat, eat, while habit is warms. Us. Someone has arrived, and the spiders move to greet them. For hours you delve into the menacing forest. Thorny undergrowth and sticky crawlers grub at you as if with minds of their own. A subtle change in the echo of the wood heralds a change in scenery, and you soon come upon a dark, gurgling stream. While the watery smells and soothing sounds relax you, you've been warned not to trust any water in Mirkwood, save for that gathered from fresh rain. The spiders must have crossed the stream by traversing the canopies above, but how will you cross? A nearby dead tree may be the answer. You attempt to push at the dry trunk, hoping for it to fall and bridge the stream. Unfortunately, your efforts attract the local wildlife. And here we have it. All right, so find a way across the stream. I will be happy to do so. And as I've said, our willpower slash fate ability is very low because in previous decks, I have been able to utilize Arwen's ability to do so much damage with that because she can do three fate or willpower damage per action, and that's really, really good. But as it stands, I don't have anything that can do that in my deck right now, because we are much more focused on killing actual minions. So hopefully we'll be able to survive here. All right, so Sting has uh, the ability to give plus one attack, but also plus two when attacking orc or spider units. Hmm. Well, that's really nice. We also have the Warrior Sword right here, which gives just a flat plus one attack. This is, in my opinion, one of the most powerful cards. I know that seems like a stupid thing to say because it is just plus one attack. I mean, what are you going to get out of that? But most cards that you're going to have are going to be one attack or two attack. It's kind of rare to have a, a card that has three attack unless it has some sort of inherent buff. And so... If you have a card that has three attack as a base and you give warrior sword to it, like for example in the previous episode I was using a combination of King Dane and Dwalin, and Dwalin had a base attack of four because of his inherent buffs, because of King Dane buffing him, so he had plus two attack from those two sources, and then if I were to have warrior sword on top of that, he's going to have five attack, which is just crazy. Crazy damage. So anyway, let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna be playing the curious brandy buck. Like 
And what we're going to do is we are going to utilize our guard ability, our defense. And uh, this is something that I don't think I touched on in the previous episode. But basically what this does is it makes it so that the enemy is forced to attack this card if they want to attack us at all. So that's exactly what we're going to do. There you go. Forced to attack. And it also has a counterattack as a result of it as well. So... If the enemy has a 2 attack value, then it's going to do two, 2 damage to our guarding unit. But the guarding unit is also going to be able to counterattack the attacking unit. And as a result, is going to be able to eliminate it if you have the right amount of attack. So hopefully that was understandable. That was a little bit confusing. Oh uh, well, never mind. What we're going to do is we're going to kill the Viper. And we are going to just continue to eliminate enemies. But we're going to need to get past the block's path eventually. So I am going to attack with Gimli here. We're just going to try and make it so that Sauron has nowhere to turn to really. So we're just going to continue eliminating his minions so that they can't do anything really. They can't do anything at all. And then we are going to focus on the objectives. Now, of course... If we had Arwen right right here, this thing would already be dead. If Idrian, for example, was Arwen, then it would be a no-brainer. This would be dead, and we would be able to focus on this in the next phase. But as it stands, we're not focusing on, on willpower damage at the moment, so it is going to be a bit slower to accomplish these objectives. But that's the whole beauty of card games, and especially in the, the Lord of the Rings adventure card game, because you can basically create any deck you want and this is just a deck that i threw together with a whole bunch of tactics based cards this is not even a you know not even a meta deck you know it's not even a deck that is proven by anyone in particular i just threw this together and thought to myself yeah this seems this, is, this seems like a fun thing to do so why not you know let's just try it out and that's the cool thing about it so let's see if he's going to ah he's going to use some treachery yeah treachery is kind of annoying so i guess we'll see if it does anything bad to us. Eyes of the Forest, plus one resource to Sauron for each ally in play. Oh, okay, yeah, so he did gain a whole bunch of resource, but I don't think I really mind too much about that. We're just going to continue doing damage. Uh, he's going to use Watchful Eyes now. That's kind of annoying, because that gives him threat. And threat is a thing that I really do not like. It is a ticking time bomb that eventually results in a victory for Sauron because once it reaches 50 that is an automatic defeat for you for the player so what we're going to do is I'm going to focus on the watching eyes thing wow a lot of treachery he's playing I mean, you would expect that from the Dark Lord wouldn't you <laughs> certainly okay so let's do some damage to that and I can't really do much else I could play this which might make sense let's do it uh, after you play a card, discard one random card from your hand. Okay, yeah. Oh, warrior sword. I really didn't want to do that. Exhaust the next ally that enters play. That's also sad. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to play the warrior sword on Legolas so that he has three attack as well. And then a new round will begin. So let's have a look and see what he decides to do. He's only got one. Oh, no, he has four resource now. Uh, we're getting man of men of Dale. They they are pretty decent. I feel I feel like they're okay. What does this ranger spear do? Okay, plus one attack and gain block. That's really nice. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ranger spear on the brandy buck because let's face it, no one wants to kill the brandy buck at all. No one wants to kill this thing because it's just going to kill the enemy minion or some random minion, and it's going to be really bad for them. So let's just uh, let's just continue to attack here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Legolas can kill the flying unit. Not a problem. Yep, he's passed now. And we are going to be able to travel in the next phase. No problem at all. But what we're going to do is before the next phase begins, we are going to go defensive with our brandy buck friend right there. Because if we are then attacked in the next zone, the defense should last. The dead tree falls across the stream with a splintery crack. You use the fallen trunk to step across, careful to not slip. What could cause wild creatures to attack so? 
Perhaps the corrupted stream is their main source of water. As you jump off the trunk on the far side, a deep rumble greets you. For a brief moment, you wonder what could make such a sound, but only for a brief moment. For out of the shadows shambles an enormous black bear. It roars. The sound is staggering. It fills the air like a living thing, terrifying and primordial. The impact of the roar sends you reeling backwards, almost into the stream. It charges, an avalanche of fur, teeth and claws. Okay, so it looks as though we have a bit of a boss to deal with. And uh, thankfully, my deck is all focused on dealing massive amounts of damage. Unfortunately, <laughs> our threat level has now reached a time where we are going to be getting a Brood Elder summon. And that is not going to be very nice. So let's see what we can do here. I think what I'm going to do is eliminate the spider first. Ooh, Dwarven Axe. That's going to be really nice to use. Okay, so I have five resource. This is really great. Basically what I can do right now is I can use Spear Wall and I can make these enemies do literally, well, not much damage. They're still going to be able to do some damage, but they won't be able to do as much as they would have normally. So there you go. That's really, really good. And otherwise, Dwarven Axe. I'm going to give this to a Dwarf, aren't I? So let's give this to Gimli. And now he has five attack. Yes. I love equipment-based decks. I, I feel like equipment is really, really fun to use. And uh, you know what? I can literally just do whatever I like now. We can, we can kill this spider pretty easily. Gathering gloom. Reduce every ally to... Oh, yeah, that doesn't actually matter to me right now. That is not the kind of deck that I'm playing. If it was, I would be in a pretty big amount of trouble right now. But thankfully, that is not the case. So, yeah, well, let's use Gimli to attack. That is a massive amount of damage for this game. Five damage, six damage, anything like that. You're going to... Yeah, it's a lot of damage right there. And we are now done. There we go. And we can now travel in the next phase. So let's, let's do defense for our little dwarf there. And let's go. Before the monotony of the forest claws at you again, you come upon a sudden clearing. The sluggish breeze and one grey light of the dell are a welcome change from the humid twilight of the forest. On the far side of the clearing, you spy what you've been looking for. A group of large spiders hovering over a tightly wound cocoon. It's time for a rescue. Oh yes, it is. Let's do it. Okay, so there we go. There's the cocoon. That, that is, I suppose... Well, I, I guess it is Bilbo, I hope. Anyway, defeat six enemy units or defeat every enemy in play. This is going to be pretty easy for us, I think, because we still have Sting here as well. Bear that in mind. I will be able to give Sting to someone. I don't know who I'm going to be giving it to, but I'm going to use Legolas' ability on one of these spiders to hopefully make it a bit quicker for us to win the day. And we can now give Citadel Plate to Legolas, which is exactly what I'm going to do because he is a little bit injured and I do not want him to die. Okay, there we go. Nice. Look at that. Look at this. Gimli is just an absolute beast right now. That is just crazy. Okay, so let's have Sting. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to give Sting to... I mean, here's the thing. Everyone has a weapon. So I'm going to need to give this to someone else. This guy cannot have any attachments. So do you think I could give it to... No, this guy already has Ranger's Spear. Ah, well, I guess I'm just going to leave Sting where it is. And uh, I guess we'll just have to go with the units that we have. So let's just use Gimli to kill that. That is super easy to do. And I really wish I had a unit that had four attack, but I do not, unfortunately. So I guess we'll just go here. And then we can just... Uh, oh, that's nice. Okay, that's really good, because I was hoping that I could use Idrian soon. So let's use her, and then we can then, you know, trigger the Vanquish ability. Then she's ready to attack once again. And hopefully, yep, there we go. We can use her on that if we want to. Or we could just use the Dwarf to attack this. 
this deck is all about killing enemy units. It is just really, really nice. I like this deck that I've created here. And as I say, this is not a pre-built deck. There are many, many pre-built decks. So if you're not into deck building or anything like that, then you can very easily just use one of the pre-built decks. And I'm sure they're going to be just as fun to play with. There are many. So yeah, there's like, I don't know, five, six, seven different pre-built decks. So it's pretty awesome. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm going to be attacking here. Despair plus one threat after attacking this enemy. Is that is that what it said? Yeah, after attacking this enemy. Ah, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to have to do that. You tear into the con concerningly large cocoon, much to your disappointment, but not to his. The cocoon contains not Bilbo, but a beyonding by the name of Will Elk. The lady and her brood are gathered at the edge of their lair. A band of orcs and goblins have emerged from the trees. Some heave empty wagons, others carry torches. A huge orc tromps to stand before the lady. Oh, the moon is full, Spidey! Uthak comes to collect! He snarls. The lady chitters at her lieutenants who rush back into the webs. The spiders soon return with web-wrapped cocoons, depositing them in front of the orc captain. Goblins rush to gather the cocoons, loading them into carts. As the last cocoons are loaded, a hooded goblin begins screeching at Uthak, pointing to a parchment full of hash marks. Uthak glares at the yelling goblin for a moment, and blinks and pivots back to the lady. We won short, Leggy! The orc's grainy voice is mild, but laced with promise of violence. Cold masters don't like short. Uthok don't like short. We had deal. After recovering, Will Elk thanks you profusely. Over the past few months, he tells you, a number of tribesmen have gone mysteriously absent. He suspects they've fallen prey to similar circumstances but offers no explanation as to why the great spiders have suddenly become so daring. Afraid to return home through the forest alone, Will Elk offers to join you, and suggests which direction the spiders were taking him. Somewhere under the never-ending trees before you, an old hobbit awaits rescue, or doom. All right, so there it is. A quest has been completed in the, uh, I believe it is the Shadows Reach campaign, because the new campaign, the Shadows Fall, is, uh, is currently 50% off right now. And I'd highly recommend checking that out, because it is, there's a lot of content. I mean, you, I mean, this took me quite a while to complete, and there are four more quests to do. And we're also getting Honeycomb as a card completion bonus. This is our first completion of this. And uh, what this does is choose... Uh, oh, you choose but choose this. Okay, remove Pursuit from every enemy or restore 2 HP to one character. So that's actually really nice for one resource point. Okay, and... Nice! We gained some more Fellowship points as well. Unfortunately, I did not use Sting to defeat six enemies, but it's only 200 Fellowship points, so I don't really mind too much. And this is the first time that any of these heroes have completed this quest. So we gain 1500. And that is it for quest one. And you can see here that there are many, many other quests ahead of us right here. So you can see that you do have to complete the other quests beforehand, of course. And the next one is tracking Bilbo's abductors to their lair. You are surprised to see spiders and orcs together. Whatever their plans for Bilbo, you are determined to stop them. And, well, I think that will probably be it for this episode. And if you would like to experience the wonders of the Lord of the Rings adventure card game, there is a link in the description. I'd highly recommend checking it out. It has just released on Steam, out of early access, and it is coming to Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 later this year. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.